Laudator Jesus Christus, Vatican and World News. Today, Saturday, March 6th, is the Feast of St. Rose of Viterbo and the second day of Pope Francis' apostolic journey to Iraq. And these are today's headlines. Pope Francis meets with Shiite Muslim leader Grand Ayatollah Saeed Ali al-Sistani. At the traditional birthplace of Abraham, the Holy Father takes part in an interreligious meeting. And Catholic Relief Services, a country representative in Iraq, says the Pope's visit can draw international attention to the country. From the Vatican, I'm Christopher Wells. Our top story today, Pope Francis traveled to the Iraqi city of Najaf on Saturday morning for a courtesy visit to Grand Ayatollah Saeed Ali al-Sistani, an encounter which stressed the importance of friendship, mutual respect, and dialogue between religious communities. Lydia O'Kane has the story. It was a 45-minute meeting with a strong message, with both Pope Francis and the Grand Ayatollah Saeed Ali al-Husseini al-Sistani urging peaceful coexistence in a country racked by violence and hardship in recent years. The Pope arrived in the city of Najaf from Baghdad on Saturday morning, making his way to al-Sistani's humble home on a narrow column-lined street for this historic encounter. The residence of the Grand Ayatollah is located near the shrine of Imam Ali, or Mosque of Imam Ali, which is considered by Shiites to be the third holy site of Islam after Mecca and Medina. Grand Ayatollah al-Sistani is the leader of Iraq's Shiites, who comprise more than 60% of the population and is an influential figure in global Shiism and throughout the country. Preaching the abstention of religious authorities from direct political activity, he is considered a valuable interlocutor for the various political and religious factions in the country. In 2004, he supported free elections in Iraq, hence making an important contribution to the planning of the first democratic government in the country, while in 2014 he called on Iraqis to unite to fight against the self-styled Islamic State. More recently, in November of 2019, when the population took to the streets in protest against the high cost of living and national political instability, al-Sistani called on protesters and police to remain calm and not to resort to violence. As a masked, Pope Francis entered the doorway of the Grand Ayatollah's residence. A number of white doves were released in a sign of peace. The theme of peace and fraternity continued throughout the meeting, with Pope Francis stressing the importance of cooperation and friendship between religious communities for contributing to the cultivation of mutual respect and dialogue to the good of Iraq, the region and the entire human family. According to a statement from the Holy See Press Office, the Pope thanked Grand Ayatollah al-Sistani for speaking up, together with the Shiite community, in defense of those most vulnerable and persecuted amid the violence and great hardships of recent years, and for affirming the sacredness of human life and the importance of the unity of the Iraqi people. As he took his leave of the Grand Ayatollah and continued the second day of this landmark visit to Iraq, the Pope said that he continues to pray that God, the creator of all, will grant a future of peace and fraternity for the beloved land of Iraq, for the Middle East, and for the whole world. I'm Lydia O'Kane. Cardinal Miguel Angel Ayuso is the president of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue. He was with Pope Francis during the private meeting with Ayatollah Sistani. Cardinal Ayuso told Vatican News the encounter was a precious witness of shared values of dialogue, inclusion, and fraternity. It has been a pleasure for me to have had today the chance of accompanying Pope Francis in his courtesy visit to the Grand Ayatollah Ali Assistani in his private home that uh, has allowed Pope Francis to discover the great uh, hospitality that the Grand Ayatollah has offered to the Holy Father in this courtesy visit. A long encounter uh, that uh, has witnessed uh, how two personalities, two religious leaders from Catholic Church and from the Shia Muslim, denomination 
have uh, shared common values that uh, are very common with what Pope Francis is in these years of his pontificate promoting, all aiming at uh, promoting a culture of dialogue, a culture of the encounter, uh, a culture of inclusivism, so that uh, every component of a society coming from any ethnic group, from any culture, from any religious tradition that may live together in peace. That was Cardinal Miguel Angel Ayuso, the president of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue. Following his meeting with the Grand Ayatollah, Pope Francis flew to the Iraqi city of Nazaria for an interreligious meeting that was held at the historic site of Ur of the Chaldeans. Pope Francis spoke with representatives of the three Abrahamic religions next to the ruins of the house that tradition holds as the birthplace of the patriarch Abraham. In his speech, Pope Francis urged Muslims, Christians, and Jews to journey together along a path of peace under the stars of the promise God made to Abraham. Devin Watkins has the story. Pope Francis traveled on Saturday to Ur of the Chaldeans, the birthplace of the three major religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. His meeting there was billed as the high point of his efforts to promote interreligious dialogue and fraternity in Iraq. This blessed place brings us back to our origins, to the sources of God's work, the Pope said in his speech to representatives of the three Abrahamic religions. Returning to Ur, the birthplace of Abraham, we seem to have returned home, added the Pope. He was speaking at a venue set up next to what tradition holds was Abraham's house. It was here that Abraham heard God's call and set out on a journey that would change history, he said, adding that we are the fruits of that event. The Pope went on to note that God asked Abraham to count the stars and promised the patriarch that his descendants would be as numerous. And he reflected on the lessons we can learn from stargazing. He said those same stars which our father Abraham looked upon still illumine our darkest nights because they shine together. Heaven imparts a message of unity, said the Pope. The Almighty above invites us never to separate ourselves from our neighbors. Lamenting the dark clouds of terrorism, war, and violence that have overshadowed Iraq, Pope Francis recalled that all ethnic and religious communities have suffered and he especially lifted his voice in defense of the Yazidi community, many of whom have been murdered, sold as slaves, and forced to convert. And the Pope prayed for those who have fled Iraq or been abducted, asking God that they may soon return home. Pope Francis said our stargazing also pushes us along the way of peace. Peace, he added, requires alliances that do not pit us against them, but unite us by overcoming division. Hatred, he added, is the true enemy. Finally, Pope Francis encouraged the faithful of the three Abrahamic religions to find inspiration in our common father and turn our weapons into instruments of peace. Here together, he concluded, we wish to commit ourselves to fulfilling God's dream that the human family may become hospitable and welcoming to all his children. I'm Devin Watkins. After the interreligious meeting, participants joined Pope Francis in prayer, calling on God to grant the gifts of reconciliation, peace, and the strength to rebuild the ravaged nation. The prayer was recited aloud in Arabic by Father Amir, an Iraqi priest. Linda Bardoni has this report. In the stark but poignant setting provided by a simple tent-like structure with white drapes to protect participants from the sun, Pope Francis thanked the Lord for having granted a strong faith to all the children of Abraham and prayed for rebirth in Iraq. Joining him in prayer before Abraham's house in the southern Iraqi plain of Ur with the amazing remains of a 4,000-year-old Sumerian temple visible on the horizon, were Muslims, Jews, representatives of Iraq's Christian churches, as well as members of Iraqi religious minorities, including the Yazidis and Sabaeans. As children of Abraham, the prayer recites, Jews, Christians and Muslims 
together with other believers and all persons of goodwill, we thank you, Lord, for having given us Abraham, a distinguished son of this noble and beloved country, to be our common father in faith. They invoked God's help to make each of them a witness of his loving care for all, particularly for refugees, the displaced, and other vulnerable people. They asked that their hearts may be opened to mutual forgiveness in the path to reconciliation as builders of a more just and fraternal society. They did not neglect to pray for the victims of violence and war and for Iraqi authorities engaged in protecting their people and caring for their common home. Guide us, they concluded, in the work of rebuilding this country, granting us the strength needed to help those forced to leave behind their homes and lands, enabling them to return in security and dignity and to embark upon a new, serene and prosperous life. I'm Linda Bordoni. Responding to the uh, Pope's uh, morning events, Iraq's Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadimi announced that in celebration of the historic meeting in Najaf between Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani and Pope Francis and the historic interreligious meeting in the ancient city of Ur, March 6th has been declared a national day of tolerance and coexistence in Iraq. Pope Francis's second day in Iraq concluded with a Chaldean Rite Divine Liturgy celebrated in Baghdad's Chaldean Cathedral of St. Joseph. In his homily, the Holy Father explained that we can help God fulfill his promises by witnessing to love in the Beatitudes. You can visit our Vatican News web portal at www.vaticannews.va for reports on all of today's events, along with pictures and videos, as well as full coverage of each day of the Pope's apostolic journey to Iraq and full news coverage of news from the Vatican and around the world each and every day of the year. Finally, Vatican News spoke with Davide Bernocchi, the Catholic Relief Services country representative in Iraq, Speaking from Baghdad, he said the Pope's visit to Iraq is a precious opportunity to draw international attention to a country that has suffered from a great deal of violence and instability. It is also a perfect occasion to show the world that Iraq is still there, that Iraq still has needs, that the world doesn't have to forget Iraq uh, during this uh, difficult time. I mean, it is true that... uh, Thank God that the ISIS experience is over in this country. At the same time, Iraq still has major issues. 1.2 million people are still displaced. Almost 5 million people just got back to areas that are not uh, completely adapted to welcoming back uh, um, such a huge population. And uh, there is a worsening economic crisis due to the oil price uh, fluctuation, which is uh, pushing a lot of people into poverty and depriving the government from uh, the means it needs to help its own people. Many thanks to our Vatican News team in Iraq. In the Vatican, I'm Christopher Wells.